Hello, everybody. That was an unexpected butt-kicking of the Chicago Bulls on a road back-to-back after the Warriors stunk up the joint in Milwaukee. I got a few requests to look at Jonathan Kaminga's play as he poured in 25 points in 25 minutes. I liked how he got a lot of the points in the flow of the offense, and he had a certain chemistry with Steph Curry, which is important. And then he threw some passes that I really loved. So Kaminga came in in the start of the second quarter. The Warriors ran, I might in the future call the Kaminga play, because this is the number one play they run for him. It always starts off with Kaminga in this post area, and he gets a pin down screen over here, and he'll loop around and get a second pin down screen. There's the first screen. This is not a real tight loop in the sense this pin down screen was just to make it easy to get the pass over to Kaminga without the defender overplaying that passing lane. And the real juice comes here. Whenever Steph Curry sets a screen, it's always alarm bells for the defense because no one wants to leave Steph Curry, even if he's in the middle of a stump. But here Steph sets a screen on Kaminga's man, and Kaminga's going to whip around the corner. How can you possibly defend this? Because Steph is someone who sets real screens. He really wants to nail his man and stop them. So what we need is for Steph's man to switch over. And that's already going to be a hard switch because Kaminga's flying downhill at you. But the other thing is it's, it's really hard to leave Steph Curry. We've got Kobe White seeing that Kaminga's flying towards the basket. He's thinking, do I try to jump in front of this runaway truck and leave Steph Curry? No one ever got fired for staying with Steph Curry, so I'm going to take my chances and stick with Steph Curry, and maybe Kaminga will accidentally hit his nose on the rim and mess up the dunk. No, the dunk was successful. This play is a good old-fashioned Steph Curry wing pick and roll. Usually there's Draymond over here to set the picks, but we're going to try Bielitsa. He's a pretty good decision maker on the roll, and he's been slumping pretty hard. So coming is going to clear out. Bielitsa is going to put the screen on this fellow. The Bulls are playing it in this, I would say, controversial way. This defender's dropped way back behind the three-point line. In theory, Steph could dribble up pop from here, he can definitely make that shot. So that means that the defender's going to have to surge in to challenge Steph. Steph's man's been trailing him. This defender has stepped up to challenge Steph's shot. Steph seems to be intentionally trying to draw two of them because he could have pulled up. Now Bielitsa, the roll man, he hasn't rolled very far. He probably should be rolling up more like here, but Steph is going to try to get the ball over to him. A little behind the back pass for extra flair. Bielitsa steps up. Bielitsa's jumper has looked a little bit wonky recently. I don't know what's up with it. He could have had an open three here. Instead, this man looks like he's closing out. And so is attacking the closeout. And in particular, he seems to want to draw this defender over because that will leave Kaminga open on the wing. So is going to drive right at this man. And the second that he sees the man is rotated over, which is probably unnecessary because this man was already recovering, he now knows Kaminga is pretty free. I really like this. Kaminga's starting to know what his priority is. His first priority is to drive. This defender closed out, but not very hard. He's stopping behind the three-point line because the Bulls definitely want to encourage Kaminga to fire away from three. Instead, Kaminga's going to do this looping action that was so successful last time. Once he starts driving like this, if he can turn the corner on a defender, then he's strong so the defender cannot bump him off his path. So I love getting him driving in this kind of angle. There he is. He just turned the corner on his defender, and so his defender is hip to hip with Kaminga, and Kaminga is so strong, he's going to not let Dosumnu deflect his path in any way. He's just going to keep on going. This big is just sitting in the paint waiting for Kaminga, so it doesn't look great at this moment. I don't really know from this angle what the big was doing, but the big somehow decided to come over and contest on Kaminga's right hand. And Kaminga says, thank you very much. I'm just going to levitate and put in a little bank shot. Sweet. In this play, Andre has to quickly pick up this roll man. This guy's a lot bigger than Andre, so Andre's in trouble, right? Lonzo Ball is going to sneak the ball to the big. But Andre jumps in front of Bradley, comes up with a steal. Andre got, it felt like, about five deflections in a row at this point of the game. 
This is such a modern NBA fast break. The Warriors literally have a five on two. If you don't count these guys back here, it's a three on two. Probably, I think Bielitsa is thinking this defender will stay with Steph, so it's really a two on one. So I'm just gonna run and try to take this defender with me and then Kaminga can levitate and become a sky god and throw down. Kaminga is looking at Steph the entire way. If everyone is on the same page, then it would have been even more efficient if Bielitz had come over and screened Lonzo Ball. But he doesn't. And Kaminga says, I'm going to throw it to Steph anyway. He looks a little bit open. So this is just raw speed. The pass is on the money and Steph just fires it up, even though Ball's making a really nice closeout right in his face. Oof, this play comes after a timeout. I'll let it run for a second to see if you can guess what play it is. All right, this is head tap. The ball always swings across the top. The small comes over and sets a cross screen for Andrew Wiggins. He has two options. One is he can come across and take this cross screen and then post up. The other is that if he's overplayed this way by his defender, then he can go up top and get a pin down. So Wiggins can go two ways. He can go opposite post or he can zipper up to the top. The Bulls defend this in a slightly unusual way. Poole tries to set this cross screen, but his defender rides him out of the play. And that lets Wiggins' defender stay with him as Wiggins tries to cut across, backs his butt up and tries to get in Wiggins' way as well. It's a real traffic jam here. So this is a pretty interesting way to defend head tap that I haven't seen before with Vucevic here blocking off Wiggins from the top to some new blocking him from the bottom. They formed a fence to prevent Wiggins from coming through to receive the ball. So Jordan Poole says, okay, it's time for option two. When the little sets the screen, the little has the option of zippering up and getting this pin down screen. And that's exactly what happens here. And it's particularly good because Wiggins is drawn too. Vucevic abandons the Wiggins blockade and he's stepping up, but the Vucevic defense seems to be that he is not allowed to leave this territory of the paint, which is probably a good idea. So he's basically just zoning up the paint and everybody else just has to make the best of it. Looney's getting a screen on Jordan Poole's defender. The defender does not bad job to stay with him. Unfortunately for Matt Thomas, after all that hustle, he goes for that little up fake from Poole and now Poole can sidestep into an open three. Looney does something subtle. Once he set that screen, he's going to ride down just to make sure that Vucevic is following him. And that means the only one who can help is Lonzo Ball over here. And he's a pretty aware defender, so that's what he does. As he closes out hard, Thomas is going to pool as well, and Poole's gravity has now drawn two. Kaminga is the lucky winner of the lottery. This is a really, really open three, and there's only eight on the shot clock, so I think this is a great shot to be taking. This play starts on defense. They got the ball to Vucevic, who's posting up Looney. This is definitely some kind of called defense because I don't think Kamenga would freelance like this. He says, I'm gonna drop down and double team. Vucevic makes the nice read and gets that ball out. Cross to ball. Pool has to rotate to ball. Ball knows this and he tries to do something slick where he catches the ball with one hand and he passes it across to the open man, Matt Thomas, while Poole closes out. Can't totally blame Ball for hot-dogging it like this because why not? Basketball's supposed to be fun. But also Kaminga still practically touching Vucevic. You wouldn't think he'd be able to cross a quarter of the court to intercept this pass, but he does. At the moment that Kaminga intercepts this pass, Ball is actually ahead of him on the court and he's starting to run back. So this is a straight acceleration race between Ball and Kaminga. And Kaminga just runs away from these two excellent athletes going away. He's like Usain Bolt here. This play starts with some nice defense. Vucevic trying to drive. Otto Porter Jr. Just takes his hand and pokes the ball away from behind. Poke. Now it's a foot race. This is a, essentially a four on two, but it's gonna turn to a three on two. This defender has to come to meet Wiggins, otherwise Wiggins will go down the middle and just dunk it. Wiggins saw Kaminga the entire way, 
Once the defender commits, cute little pass to Kaminga, who got himself deep under the basket. If he was over here, then he would have caught the ball sooner and just been able to dunk it. But hey, he still catches the ball, and because he's under the basket, he has to go under the basket and do a reverse bank shot, which is not to be taken for granted. Kaminga's touch around the basket, I think, still has room for improvement. A lot of the film I saw of him in the G League had him getting right to the basket and just having uh, hit and miss finishes right at the rim but that's a hit so that was it for the points that Kaminga scored in non-garbage time it's not a knock on Kaminga because his play made sure there was a lot of garbage time but I can't resist throwing in a couple more plays this play starts with Kaminga just straight up ice swing Kobe White Kaminga thinks, why am I trying to drive by this guy? I'm way bigger than him. Let me just put my butt over here and just back him down. That's what he does. And the Bulls have very confused defense here. Juan Toscano Anderson's man is stunting in and poking at Kaminga. Tony Bradley over here is completely transfixed by Kaminga. He's just really interested to see what Kaminga's gonna do. I don't blame him, me too. Bradley is supposed to be guarding Bielitsa, and Bielitsa says, Fine, if my man turns his head, he can't see me unless he uses echolocation, and he does not look like a giant squid, so I'm just going to drive right down the lane. And this is such a sweet pass from Kaminga here with such beautiful touch. Yoink. That's beautiful. Kobe White's looking, saying, What? what? How did that even happen? Whose guy was that? I had things under control. This play is super important because you can imagine Kaminga doing this all the time. But this is a wing pick and roll, and the role of Steph Curry will be played by Jordan Poole. Kaminga is going to come up and set a screen. This angle didn't look too good, so Kaminga came over to set a flat angle straight behind him. But Poole's going to want him to set an angle on this side, so Kaminga keeps on adjusting. Nice little turn little change the angle, rescreen, bumps this guy, forces the switch, and just for a split second, there's confusion in the defense. I think this is Dosamnu, and I think that this is our old friend Alfonso McKinney. Yay! Looks like Zoe got another major league contract. Good for him, but he's new to the team, and he thinks he's fighting through the screen and not switching. This man jumped out, and so basically now Poole has drawn two. Kaminga should release. Nice pocket pass, and now Kaminga here is running the short roll. This is the Draymond roll. He's just going to drive straight at the basket. The low, weak side man, closest to the basket, on the other side of the court, rotates over to stop Kaminga's drive. I think Kaminga thinks for a second about jumping over this fellow, but he decides, no, let me try to do conventional human-sized things. This defender's rotating behind. He's sinking in because he knows that this defender left Juan Toscano Anderson in the corner. So he's sinking in to cover behind the rotator. And this play is really cool looking. The defender has come over, and I think the defender thinks that Juan Toscano Anderson is behind him, back over here, because Kaminga holds out the ball over here like a, a big distracting doggy treat, and everyone is drawn to this ball here. And this defender, he's going to get his hands up and just stay in this position right here, as if to cut off any pass behind him to the corner. But Toscano Anderson is not in the corner. He's cut straight down the baseline, and he's going to be under the basket any minute now. And so Kaminga, it's just, I love this pass. He just holds it at the ball like the Statue of Liberty. Hey, look, I'm going to throw the ball this way, and then just flicks it that way. Oh, that was so nice. And I don't care if it came in a 40-point game, because he can do that in a close game as well. Run the short roll, make a great read, and then made a great pass. So all in all, really fun game from the rookie Jonathan Kaminga. He got a lot of his offense in the flow of the normal offense, and I loved the passing and, in general, loved the decision-making. So really promising stuff from the rookie. I would love it if he keeps up this kind of play and forces Steve Kerr to start playing him regular minutes, that would be a win for everybody. Damian Lee in the corner here when he sees Kaminga go up for this dunk, he's going to try to put some body English on it to help that dunk get in. 
And he lands. He kind of jumped up and then he's like, oh yeah, this dunk doesn't need any help. You don't put body English on a nuclear missile. 